Hello everyone, my name's Brody, and on today's episode of Brody's Learning Adventures, we'll be learning about defining from context. Have you ever heard your mom talking about someone? You've never met the person, but you can tell from her tone of voice and the words she uses to describe them that she doesn't like the person at all, or that she likes the person a lot. That's context, the things around something that help us understand it. Here's an example. Let's say you see a man with a big hose. Why does he have it? What kind of person is he? That depends on the context. If he fi if he's filling a swimming pool, he might be the caretaker of a, pool of a pool. If he's shooting it at a burning building, he might be a fireman. If he's watering a plant, he might be a master gardener. Using context to define a word. The same thing goes for words. Sometimes we don't know what a word means, but we can still figure out something about it from context in the sentence. Here's an example. Some people like lions and others like tigers, but I prefer bandersnatches. From the comparison to people who like lions or tigers, you can guess that a bandersnatch is probably an animal like a lion or tiger, somehow different from a lion or tiger, or perhaps better than a lion or tiger. And a bandersnatch is an imaginary word created by Lewis Carroll. We can use context to guess the meaning. It's context to guess the meaning of words in nonfiction too. Like in this passage from the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. There was a salt marsh that bounded part of the mill pond on the edge of which, at high water, we used to stand to fish for minnows by which, by much trampling, we had made it a mere quagmire. My proposal was to build a wharf there fit for us to stand on, and I showed my comrades a large heap of stones, which were intended for a new house near the marsh, and which would very well suit our purpose. Accordingly, in the evening, when the workmen were gone, I assembled a number of my playfellows, and working with them diligently, like so many emmets, sometimes two or three to a stone, we brought them all away and built our little wharf. The next morning, the workmen were surprised at missing the stones which were found in our wharf. Inquiry was made after the removers. We were discovered and complained of. Several of us were correct by our fathers, and I thought and though I pleaded the usefulness of the work, mine convinced me that nothing was useful and not which was not honest. Example. What in the world is a quagmire? First, look at what else is around it. It's on the edge of a marsh, so it's probably wet or damp. It happens when you trample uh, down the edge of a marsh. It's not as nice as a marsh, because he calls it a mere quagmire, as if it's worse than it was before. Second, take an educated guess. I would guess a quagmire is something watery and not very pleasant. If we look up quagmire in a dictionary, it describes land that is so soaked with water that it is not solid anymore. Pretty close to the definition we arrived at just by context. What's an emmet? First, look at what else is around it. An, a number and so many makes me think there are lots of them. Working diligently means good workers. Sometimes two or three to a stone, so his friends are working together. Then take an educated guess. I would guess an emmet is an animal that often works hard with many other emmets, possibly to build things. If we look up emmet in a dictionary, it turns out it is an old word for ants. Who do work hard, work together, and build things? Here's a quiz to see if you've been paying attention. But this isn't going to be your normal quiz. I'm going to be reading to you a classic poem by Lewis Carroll called Jabberwocky. Let's see if you can guess the strange words in this poem. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe, all mimsy were the borogoves and the momraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the mangsome foe he sought. 
So rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while and thought. And as an uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the toldy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through, and through. The vocal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock, my son? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, fruptuous day, caloo, calay! He tortled in his joy. Let me know in the comments below what you think those strange words meant. Fraptuous, uffish, maxim, gyre, and outgrave mean. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that way you won't miss any of my other videos. This is Brody, signing out.